Hi there, welcome to Grain TV. I'm Kevin McNew. It's Tuesday, February 16th. The holiday shortened week got off on positive footing. Let's take a look at the Grain Edge trading platform and see where we closed. In Chicago, corn up four cents, beans up six and a quarter, and wheat in Chicago also up six. News this morning, there was quite a bit of it to gravitate towards. Let's start first with USDA's announcement yet again of another export sale, this time 190,000 metric tons to Colombia. That marks the, th the third day out of four days in a row that we have seen those kind of deals announced totaling nearly 500,000 metric tons. So we're starting to see a bit of a tide change in regards to corn exports. We've been slow certainly for the first half of the marketing year and even into January, but as we've gone into February, we've seen the dollar back off about 4% in this uh, latest financial slide. And so we're seeing some new export business head to the U.S. shores which is good. In other export news, Egypt continuing to be a thorn in the international markets has rejected four soybean cargoes that they had bought from the U.S. They claim there was a ambrosia fungus in those supplies and some people are speculating that this may be sort of a uh, backlash, if you will, against Bungie who filed a lawsuit last week against Egypt for rejecting a wheat cargo based on um, ergo uh, samples there. The other news today, crude got really excited in the overnight session after uh, four countries, Qatar, Venezuela, Saudi Arabia, and Russia this announced that they would be holding steady their supply situation in crude oil for based on January numbers. Now, this is not a cut. This is not an agreement to cut. This is only an agreement to hold steady based on what they did in January. But the caveat to this is that other countries have to agree to it as well. And this is where we think the deal will likely not hold up because you have Iran, who just recently got back in the oil exporting business, who is eager to export and produce as much as possible. And you also have Iraq, who is struggling with paying for a war against ISIS, and they too will probably not want to cede to uh, any sort of cut revision or any sort of supply uh, quotas. So the market initially got excited when where there was talk of meetings uh, between these countries, but when the results or the announcement was made that they were going to hold at January numbers, this was kind of viewed as a, a bearish result because the market really needs to see supply cuts before we can eclipse that $30 mark. So overall, the market was lower today, trading back into the $29 range after trading as high as $31. let us turn now to more grain-specific news and U.S. export inspections for the week. Uh, we had soybeans well above analyst expectations coming in at 1.7 million metric tons versus 1 to 1.2 expected. Corn and wheat coming in line with analyst expectations. But the negative news on the day was the soybean crush number for January. The NOPA crush came in well below analyst expectations at just over 150 million bushels versus just over 155 was expected, and the December crush being 157. Now we know crush numbers were revised lower in USDA's February report by 10 million bushels, but this, this you know disappointingly low number could lead to the potential for more revisions in USDA's crush numbers going forward. Right now we're about 30 million bushels behind pace. So that is not prob or that is not promising in the long term for soybeans. But let's take a look at the soybean chart. We gapped higher to start the week on Monday night's trade session. Coming in at 875 was the gap left around 872 to 875. We did trade down to that number on these negative on this negative crush number. So we did actually trade down to it, but we quickly recovered after only about 20 minutes of really heavy selling. The market quickly recovered and ended the day six higher, although it had traded. 10 higher. I think this is a pretty positive sign for soybeans. You know, the fact that we can rally uh, and hold the gains on somewhat negative news. I'm not sure we're going to go sharply higher, but I think there's enough underlying support. We have Brazil that is backed up in terms of their export program right now. There's rain delays that are stacking up the cargoes and the vessels in their ports. And so we may see some late season business here uh, hit the U.S. shores, which is giving the market some underlying support. 
support here. That's all we got for today on Grain TV. If you have any questions, give us a call 877-472-4607 or as always, visit us online at grainhedge.com.